Hi, I'm Ozzy, Ozzy Field. I live in Bath in Putney Gardens with my wife and this is a three-bedroom Victorian terraced house uh, built about 1900. When we took this house on it was very energy inefficient and now what we feel is special about it is that it's highly efficient um, assessed by old home super homes as achieving a 68% reduction in carbon emissions which we're very proud of. Our energy retrofit project has three parts to it. First of all is conserving energy. Uh, so we've insulated the roof, insulated the walls and insulated under the floor. So part two was making the uh, heating system as efficient as possible. That meant changing the gas fire in the sitting room from 44 to 80 plus percent efficient. Secondly, changing the gas boiler from being only about 40 percent efficient to a condensing boiler 88 percent efficient and then putting in heating controls um, in different parts of the house so that we only needed to heat those parts which were lived in. Part of the energy efficiency was to change the heating in the ground floor from uh, traditional radiators to underfloor heating. The heating in this room is underfloor heating. In fact, we've got three zones of underfloor heating in this living space, in the dining room, and in the sitting room. Underfloor heating uses a tube like this, which is an aluminium tube uh, with an inner plastic lining and an outer plastic lining. And it's guaranteed for 50 years underneath because there are no joins in it. They make it in a long loop to the customer's requirements. And then you can see how it goes loop, loop, zigzag across the floor. It's water filled. How does it save energy? You only need to heat the water to about 50 degrees for underfloor heating whereas the heating in your radiators in the traditional system must be up to about 70, 75 or 80 degrees. So there's less gas used in, in heating the water for the system. With underfloor heating, the heat arises wherever you are. It does feel different and it does feel much more comfortable than traditional um, radiators. So now we're looking at the walls. This is a wall that faces the outside, so it needs insulating. We insulated along the wall and also along this wall because otherwise you might have in this corner a cold bridge whereby heat can leak out or cold can leak in and cause condensation. So that's the first consideration. Then onto the walls we fixed this insulation and then on top of the insulation comes <coughs> plasterboard. But what's good about this product is that the plasterboard comes ready attached. It does require bringing the electricals out and it does require changing the cornice. But that wasn't nearly as complicated or difficult as we thought it would be. Took a template of the cornice, went away, came back with two eight foot lengths of cornice, chopped it up, nailed it to the wall and then skimmed over it with plaster of Paris and you would never know that this was not the original. This is our new gas fire and there was a perfect good fire in place when we arrived or so we thought but the assessment showed that it was only about 40 percent efficient whereas this fire is now about 80 plus percent efficient so it's an A plus gas fire. So by changing it Overnight, we had a reduction of 50% in the gas required for heat in this room. This gas fire gives us the opportunity to have instant heat for short periods of time, for example, for an hour in the evening or when we come in from the cold um, and need a quick warm up. One of the features we're really proud of is these windows. They're triple glazed and we did a lot of hunting for them. Um, I took the view that if we were having 110 millimetres of insulation on the other walls, we didn't want to lose the heat out through the windows. But finding a supplier 
was really hard. We asked two local joiners, one of whom has done the work and achieved a U-value of 0.87. The third part of our energy retrofit was renewables and we explored various types. The only one which would really work in this house is above us on the um, back roof which faces south where we've got uh, solar thermal. It gives us hot water um, without any cost at all between about March and uh, November. Our objective was um, the code for sustainable homes level five and I think we've achieved that in terms of insulation and the other things but we haven't achieved it in terms of um, reducing the waste of water. The lows of doing this house were considerable at the time. The biggest one was the shortage of reliable information and expertise um, and that delayed us a lot and the local building regulations people said use this this the manufacturers of the very same product said don't use it in your circumstances so that was the biggest um, problem we faced the highs are a substantial reduction in our gas use and the delight in having a warm and comfortable living space which really does work what do I get out of being a super homer? Um, the delight of a measured um, achievement and knowing that we are making a tiny grain of difference but that it's a tiny grain, grain of difference doesn't really matter because there's that phrase it's better to light a candle than to curse the dark.